Mushroom coffee. Is it healthier than regular coffee? Will it help me relieve stress? Does it taste like mushrooms? I'm about to put this product to the test for the next seven days to see if it's really worth the hype. Does it have any noticeable effects and is it something worth replacing your regular cup of joe with? Now, mushroom coffee has been a growing trend as of late with different brands making their own versions and blends. It's basically made from your typical coffee grounds that are combined with powdered extracts from adaptogenic mushrooms. These are a class of mushrooms that are known to potentially have positive effects on different things like your stress levels, fatigue, they might help boost your immune system and just your daily overall well-being. Now there are a lot of different ingredient blends out there, but in this video, I'm gonna be testing the Chill Blend by Four Sigmatic. This is their decaf blend. It's combined with reishi and chaka mushroom extracts. Reishi is known for its potential calming effect on the body. It may also help improve your ability to wind down and sleep. And so I'm gonna drink a 12 ounce cup of this coffee every day for the next seven days. Now for the first three days, I'm gonna drink it during the late morning hours. And then for days four and five, I'm gonna have it in the late afternoon, kind of early evening hours. And then for the last two days, I'm gonna have it late at night before I go to bed to see if it impacts my ability to sleep at all. And each day I'm gonna be collecting some physical measures using my Garmin watch, things like my heart rate and stress level. And I'll also be taking note of how I subjectively feel each day. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna be giving a full recap with all of my thoughts and recommendations. All right, enough chatter. Let's go ahead and make the first cup. Right, here we go, y'all. Moment of truth. I'm just playing, y'all. That didn't really happen for real. I mean, hey, I'm an 80s baby, so I grew up on Super Mario, so I couldn't help it. But overall, it tastes pretty good. I mean, I can say that it does taste like coffee. It does not taste like mushrooms, so we can check that box. Now follow along with me in the days ahead, and I'll let you all know if I'm feeling a little bit more chill. So here we go. All right, y'all, it is day two. Got my late morning fix here. So yesterday was actually a holiday. I had the day off from work, so it was already kind of a chill day naturally, but we'll see how I feel later today after I finish this one off, so. All right, y'all, so it's been at least a few hours since I had my cup of coffee from earlier, and just wanna show you all where my heart rate is sitting at. All right, so again, my typical resting heart rate is right around 60 beats per minute. As you can see right here, it's or it was at 65. Overall, I would say I'm still feeling pretty chill and heart rate is at least some evidence to help support that, so. On my way to the office with my cup of Mushroom Joe. All right, friends, it is day four, and I got me a new French press. It's pretty nice. All right, so for the last few days, I was drinking the coffee during the late morning hours, kind of close to noon. But for these next few days, I'm gonna drink it in the late afternoon, kind of early evening hours. So right now it's about five o'clock, so I'm about to make a cup now. Say this new French press definitely keeps it nice and hot. I approve. Good Amazon purchase. All right, y'all. Day six. So I decided not to film yesterday's coffee because uh, we had some people working here in the house doing some renovations. There was a lot going on, so I didn't film it, although I did drink it at the same time, about five o'clock. But for tonight, it's actually after nine o'clock right now, so I'm just now having my coffee for the day, and I'm gonna see if it affects my sleep tonight at all. So let's see, one more day. 
All right, y'all, it is day seven, final day. I'm having my coffee here again later in the evening. It's a little after 9 p.m., so having it kind of as a nightcap. So stick around because in a second, I'm gonna be going over everything I've experienced over these last seven days and also give my recommendations. Okay, so let's talk about everything I just experienced over these last seven days. So when it comes to the physical data, I was able to pull measures of my resting heart rate, my stress levels, and my sleep score using my Garmin watch. And I know that there are a lot of limitations with this. I know these aren't the best measures to collect, but I decided to do it anyway, just to give us a little something extra to look at. And if anything, just for kicks and giggles. So just bear with me. What I found was that my average resting heart rate came out to 58 beats per minute with the range of 58 to 59. So, I mean, I was pretty steady, you could say. And when it came to average daily stress, now the Garmin uses heart rate variability to give an indication of stress level. They basically just give you a stress number. And so my average stress number came out to 28, which is on the lower end. So again, another pretty steady one there. Now, when it comes to sleep, again, I drank the coffee two nights prior to going to bed, but unfortunately I only wore my watch on one of those nights because I just forgot. But on the night where I did wear it, I got a sleep score of an 88 out of 100. Not too shabby. I mean, I feel pretty good about that. And so now with these numbers, what I decided to do just to give a little bit of comparison was I compared these numbers to the same averages and ranges from the week prior to doing this little experiment. The prior week was a very similar week to the week that I drank the coffee in terms of my levels of activity and just kind of my overall workload and daily routines, uh, nothing really changed. So I felt like it would be a pretty fair comparison. And so when it came to heart rate, my average resting heart rate on the week prior to drinking the coffee coffee uh, was actually at 56 beats per minute. So two beats per minute lower than the week when I had the coffee and my average level of stress during that week was a 27 compared to the 28 during the week of drinking coffee. Now you might initially look at this and be like, oh wow, your numbers increased during the week when you drank the coffee, but my numbers were in essence almost the same. So what this tells me is that drinking the coffee didn't really help me when it comes to these measures, but it also didn't hurt me as well, which I'm totally okay with. Now, when it comes to how I felt subjectively, I mean, I didn't really feel much of a difference. I would say overall, in each of these time points, I felt just fine during and after having the coffee. And I would also say that drinking it right before bed didn't negatively impact my ability to wind down and fall asleep, which again, I am a-okay with that. Now, full transparency, I'm actually not much of a coffee drinker. I mean, it's something that I drink on occasion, but it's actually not something that's part of my daily routine. What? Are you serious? And I definitely have a lot of coworkers who are baffled by the fact and they're just like, how do you function not drinking coffee? But that's honestly the reason why I decided to go with the decaf chill blend by Four Sigmatic. So I unfortunately can't comment on the fully caffeinated blends of coffee by this brand. There are definitely a number of ones out there such as the one that's designed more for focus and alertness and immunity, so on and so forth. So I'll make sure to leave links to all of those in the description below. And if any of you all decide to try out any of those blends, definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. Overall, I definitely think this mushroom coffee blend is worth trying if you like coffee and you're looking for something new or you know someone who's into the health benefits of adaptogenic mushrooms. I would say specifically if you're someone who enjoys drinking coffee but you're looking for a nice decaf version, I think this is a good one to try out. You can pretty much drink it at any time of the day, including at night if you want to have it as a nightcap drink. I definitely enjoy drinking it and I can see myself drinking it in the future during moments when hey I want a nice cup of coffee maybe we have guests over or maybe it's you know later in the evening after we've had dinner and I just want that little nightcap I want that coffee taste now would I recommend you replacing your normal coffee blend that you like with this one um, I'm not sure I mean I think that's totally up to you again I would recommend you try it and determine that for yourself I in no way want to disrupt anything that works for you individually but one of the potential cons or things things to watch out for when it comes to this coffee is the fact that uh, you don't really know exactly how much of these mushroom extracts are in these coffees, or at least I haven't been able to find any specific information on that. So if you're someone who's looking for specific amounts of these adaptogenic mushrooms, like
like the chaga, the reishi, the lion's mane, so on and so forth, then I recommend that you use a supplement powdered form of these mushrooms, which there are plenty of those out there. That way you can actually measure out the specific amounts that you want. Or you can do my favorite, which is to just consume some of these mushrooms in whole food form. Now, speaking of whole food mushrooms, if you wanna see how we made some fully plant-based crab cakes using lion's mane mushrooms that we actually grew ourselves using a simple at-home spray and grow mushroom kit, then click on this video that you see here in the top right and we'll see you over there. Peace.